Good morning, Bread Ko Mandaluyong, and Happy Lord's Day from the land down under. Welcome everyone, hoping and praying that you're all doing well. We are glad that you're able to join our online worship service today. I am Shalukhan Las, former YA Ministry Head and currently based here in Australia. I am aware that the past few days, the Philippines is once again hit with not just one, but series of destructive typhoons. It's heartbreaking to see all the photos and videos via internet of the damaging effects of the non-stop rain and strong winds. We continue to pray for the immediate restoration and recovery of the affected family. At the same time, we continue to pray for healing of all the nations from the pandemic caused by COVID-19. Not many of you know that I am living on my own away from my family when the pandemic happened. Tatay Abed, Nanay Selly, and Peachy being in Sydney. I moved to Perth beginning of this year because of a work opportunity, knowing that the Lord will go before me. I encountered challenges in different areas of my life brought about by the new changes, but truly God's grace has been sustaining me. The online technology became a means of communication with my family and friends from Sydney and the Philippines. Also through this, I was able to share motivation and message of hope and be prayed for by my close friends from Redcomb Church. God started bringing new friends, connect groups, and church family, which is becoming to be a source of support and encouragement for me here. Once again, I feel God's love and faithfulness in my life, that while He was there in the previous seasons in the past, He will also be there in the new beginnings and new chapters to come. We feel that 2020 is a year of trials and changes that we never anticipated, but this is also a year of God's great presence and grace. He moves in every direction, circumstances, and situation. We also thank God that despite of the restriction of the physical gatherings, we still have the means to worship, listen to His Word, and fellowship with one another through our online worship service. We encourage you to invite your friends and family by sharing our Facebook watch parties for online worship service every Sundays, 10 a.m., and reflection series every Thursdays, 6.30 p.m. But you can tag your every friends too. You can also share the replays of our online worship service in Facebook and YouTube. These are simple ways to continue reaching out and spreading the gospel to our communities and sphere of influence. We at Breadcomb Church also encourage you to partner with us in spreading the gospel, not just there in Mandaluyong, but to the ends of the earth. Just like our church vision, a Breadcomb Church in every city and beyond. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you'll see in the screen our bank details. May we all be feeling excited today as we sing praises to the Lord and listen to His Word. Let's prepare our hearts and allow me to read Psalm 28, 6-7. Praise be to the Lord, for He has heard my cry of mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusts in Him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to Him in song. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. We thank you for you are our faithful and merciful Father. You know exactly how we feel and you're always willing to listen and reach out to us, especially in times of needs. You are our constant shield and strength in moments of weaknesses. Lord, there are times that we feel overwhelmed with trials and run out of words to pray. But thank you, Jesus, for interceding for us. Search and cleanse our hearts, O God, as we approach you. Give us clarity of mind as we seek your revelation in our lives today. 
We lift your name on high and be magnified in our beings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So live. 
lift your voice to the Holy One. Hallelujah, He is worthy. Hallelujah, Christ the Son. Hallelujah, He is holy. So lift your voice to Good morning and happy Lord's Day everyone. Thank you for joining us in our watch party and online worship service. We are in a series of the Father's provision in uncertain time and we are in Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 14. We are looking at the Israelites experience in the wilderness. As a review, the Israelites were living in Egypt before as slaves for a very long time and right now they are in the middle of the wilderness even though they were slaves in Egypt well at least they have their own houses there and somehow their needs were provided but here in the wilderness they have to depend on the Lord they don't have houses there they only have tents and then to make the situation complicated the Lord told them that they need to enter and conquer promised land upon which they need to wage war to the people that live there so in their perspective somehow the way they see things is that they were in a mess up situation at least according to them but in the middle of all this, they made a big blunder. They committed a big mistake. So we will try to answer three questions today. And these questions are very crucial in living in certain times. And we will learn from these questions what is the Father's provision for us in living in these uncertain times, especially when we messed up the first question why people are in a mess second question what happens to people if they messed up the third question how can people recover when they messed up now let's go to the first question why people are in a mess because people refuse to turn to the Lord Exodus 32 verses 1 and 2 when people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, Take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters and bring them to me according to the verses that we have read the Israelites have a problem let me read to you again that part as for this Moses we do not know what has become of him they thought that Moses will not return because it has been 40 days and 40 nights 
since Moses came up on top of Mount Sinai. Moses was their leader. Maybe they were thinking what will happen to them. Who will lead them in living in the wilderness? Who will lead them in conquering the promised land? Because they need to wage war against those people living there. Their leader is gone. So they were confused. They were afraid and maybe angry. And they feel that they are not in control. So this is their problem that they see. And they make a solution. In verse 2, the solution that they came up with is, Make us gods who shall go before us. So the solution, instead of turning to the Lord, they turn their backs to God and turn to idols and gods upon which their hands have made. Now, why is it so appealing for them to turn to gods they've made than turning to the Lord? Maybe some of you will say and answered me, well, you really cannot blame the Israelites because they are afraid. And of course, they are in a situation and in an environment that they are not familiar and they have mixed emotions. But I think the environment is not an issue here. In fact, I think the behavior and the attitude is not the issue here. Because when we go back to Genesis chapter 3, during the time of Adam and Eve, they were living in the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is a perfect environment. All the things that they need were already provided. They cannot ask for anything more. But somehow, their response to God's faithfulness, even though they were in a perfect environment, is the same to what we have read in Exodus 32. Adam and Eve turn their backs to the Lord and pursue self-fulfillment. It's like declaring that they can achieve happiness without the help of God, but through their own strength. And then the Israelites, even though they have experienced the wonders of God that the Lord performed when they were still in Egypt, it seems that they have forgotten that. Because they chose to turn away from the Lord instead of turning to Him, asking Him what to do through Aaron, the priest. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 10 because I said that this is not a behavioral issue. This is not an environment issue. I think the issue here is the heart. If a person, his heart is not really set towards the Lord. Every time he faces problems, every time he faces stress, he will turn away from the Lord he will refuse to turn to the Lord and turn to the gods which his hands have made because his heart is not set towards the Lord. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 10, it says here, pertaining to the wilderness experience. So I was angry with them and I said, their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So if a person's heart is not set to the Lord, he will refuse to turn to Him in times of need. What the heart desires is what the will chooses. Acts 28.27, we see the same thing. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear. They have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. If the heart is not set towards God, every time a person experiences big problems, 
and faces uncertainties in life, his default is not to turn to the Lord, but turn to the gods which his hand has made. So this is why people are in a mess. Because people refuse to turn to God the Father. So what happens to people if they messed up? People will be miserable. If people refuses to turn to God in times of problems or all the time, people will be miserable. What do you mean by miserable? Well, first, it means messed up mind. In verse 4, it says here, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. So when the Israelites gave the golden earrings that they have, Aaron collected them all and threw them into the fire. And then the golds melted. And out of that, Aaron fashioned and made a golden calf. And then when the golden calf was made already, Aaron told the Israelites, this is in verse 4, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Well, in Exodus chapter 20, they clearly understood what God told them through Moses. They heard the voice of God. They saw lightning on top of Mount Sinai, thick dark clouds and black smoke, and they hear loud noise. And God told Moses, he said that he is the God who brought them out in the land of Egypt. And Moses told that to the Israelites and they clearly understood. And then in verses 1 and 2, the Israelites also know that Moses was the one who brought them out of Egypt. But here in verse 4, I'm not sure if they already forgotten that, but they said that it's the golden calf that brought them up out of the land of Egypt. They have a messed up mind. They don't know what's happening already. Some people are like that. They don't know how to make sense of everything that's going around them. Aside from a messed up mind, they also have a messed up conviction. It says here in verse 5, When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. Earlier he said that the golden calf is the gods that brought them up out of Egypt. And then after that, he said, Well, tomorrow after you worship this idol, after you dance in front of this idol, Tomorrow, we will worship the Lord our God. Making an idol and then trying to convince people to worship the Lord at the same time. Isn't that a compromise? So it's a messed up conviction. Not only their minds are messed up, their conviction also is messed up. Not only that, but they also have a messed up behavior. Because in verse 6, I'll read to you, And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And look at this. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So they drank, they were uh, dancing, they're having a party. But in the original language, the word play there while they are worshiping and dancing in front of the calf, they are also having sexual activities which the Lord hated and abhor. They have gone wild. They were out of control. They have behavior that is out of control. Messed up behavior. So this is the result when a person refused to turn to the Lord and chose to pursue the gods that their hands have made. A heart that is far away from the Lord chooses to turn away from Him and chose to pursue the gods that they have made. This is what happens. There are 
in a miserable state, in a miserable condition, their mind, their conviction, and also their behavior. And so, the result was, verses 9 and 10, And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I make a great nation of you. As Moses was speaking to the Lord on top of Mount Sinai, Israelites were having sexual activities and worshipping in front of the golden calf and proclaiming that this idol was the one who brought up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord saw it and he was angry. And the wrath of God is upon the Israelites because of what they did. And it has happened in verse 28. So the things that they saw and they thought that their situation is messed up came to reality because they did not turn to the Lord. They refused to, to turn to God in times of problems. And in verse 28, it says here, And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. In that day, about 3,000 men of the people fell. 3,000 people died because of their blunder, because of their mistake. Isn't this a mess up situation? Not only they hurt themselves, their minds, their conviction, and their behavior, they also hurt the people around them. 3,000 men fell. You know, the Bible is very consistent. It says that for the wages of sin is death. Proverbs 28, 14. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. So this is what happened. If a person, his heart is not really set to the Lord, Every time he faces uncertainties, big challenges, and problems in their life, it, he will not turn to God, but pursue God's which his hand have made. Have you met people like that in your life? No matter how tried you explain to them God's perspective, they still cannot understand. No matter how many times you tell them that what they're doing is wrong already and they are out of control, they will still do it thinking that what they're doing is right. So we have seen why people are in a mess because people refuse to turn to God. And then we also have seen in the life of Israel what happens if people turn away from the Lord and they mess up, they become miserable. And then how can people recover when they mess up? How can the Israelite recover from this mistake since the wrath of God is already upon them? People will need God's favor in their life. Exodus 32, 11-14 But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. So what we have read here, Moses was praying to God the Father, and he was seeking the favor of the Lord for the Israelites. And then, 
he also asked that he gives mercy for the sake of his promise Abraham, Isaac, and Israel and relent from his uh, disaster that he wants to inflict Israelites. And then verse 14, God gave his favor to the Israelites. You know, the Israelites doesn't deserve the favor of the Lord because of what they did. They worshiped the idols because their hearts are not set towards God. But that is the nature of favor. God giving them something that they do not deserve, which is God's goodness, forgiveness, mercy, His grace. And all of this because Moses chose to play the mediator. Because Moses pleaded with God, the Israelites experienced God's mercy and favor. Because Moses became the mediator between God the Father and the Israelites, God did not give them what they deserve, which is death. Moses was the Father's provision for the Israelites in their wilderness experience. As a father, God knew that as his children wander in the wilderness, their hearts will also wander away from him. Every time they face uncertainties or feel afraid of what's ahead, he knew that they will refuse to turn to him. So what he did was to provide Moses as their mediator so that every time they fail, they will experience his mercy, grace, and forgiveness. You know, it's amazing to see how God the Father provides for them even though their hearts are far away from him. As we continue to live in a messed up world, God the Father also provided us a mediator greater than Moses so that every time that we feel afraid, insecure, doubtful, hurt, and not in control of situation, our hearts will turn to him through our great mediator. Jesus the Father's provision for us in this messed up world died on the cross. His blood cleanses our hearts full of pride so that we can turn to Him. Hebrews 9.14 says, Just think how much more surely the blood of Christ will transform our lives and hearts. Through Christ's death and resurrection, you have a brand new heart. Ezekiel 36, 26. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. And this is what the Father told the Israelites and telling you right now. And this is made possible because Christ died on the cross and rose again and His blood was shed so that our hearts will be cleansed from all unrighteousness and sin. In the middle of our messy situation right now, how is your heart? Is your heart aching? Do you turn to God the Father for the healing of your heart? Or you just hide in a fake smile, trying to fool everyone, posing that you're okay and you're handling things very well. In the middle of what's going on around us, this mess, how is your heart? Is your heart tired and worn out? Do you turn to God your Father to rest your heart? Or you just bury yourself to your daily task, waiting to be drowned with your daily schedule hiding in the busyness of your life in the middle of the mess around us how is your heart is it empty because of all the people you allow to enter your heart expecting them to fill it only to be disappointed 
because they only use you over and over and over again. When will you offer your heart to the Father? When will you accept that only the Father's love can fill the emptiness of your heart? Are all these feelings causes you to turn to God your Father or causes you to turn away from Him? The Father is calling you right now to turn to Him. Listen to Him. As Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 to 10 says, Today, when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. When they tested me in the wilderness, there your ancestor tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them, and I said, Their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. My friend, all he wants is you. He is not intimidated to what is inside your heart. Come to Him. Turn to Him. Draw near to Him. Open your heart to Him and allow Him to work inside you. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this short story. We pray, Lord, if there is someone listening and watching this video right now, and he is not sure what is the state of his heart and he doesn't sure Lord if he has given his life and his heart to you we pray through the help of your Holy Spirit that he will surrender his life to you and Jesus Christ make you the Lord of his life Lord, if there are people listening and watching this video right now and then they have turned their backs on you for a very long time for whatever reasons they have, Lord, we pray that you will cause their hearts to turn back to you because as long as their hearts are away from you, as long as they are running away from you, they will never experience peace of mind they will never experience the rest that they are so longing to experience. And they will only hurt themselves and people around them. Holy Spirit, make them come back to you so that they can face life's uncertainties. And Lord, they will see that what you have provided them to face these uncertainties of life is your Son, Jesus Christ so that we can come to you and ask for help. And Lord, to those of us who claim, Lord, that we have a right relationship with you, in these pandemic times, we pray, Lord, that we can search our hearts through the help of the Holy Spirit, so that we can really assess, is our heart still overwhelmed by the grace of God? Or we have been captivated, or our hearts have been captivated already by the pleasures of the world. Show to us, Lord, if there are any in our life and in our hearts that causes us to turn away from you, so that we can truly repent and worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Bless us, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have been blessed with today's message or you have questions, we would like to hear from you. Message us on our Facebook page, Breadcom Mandaluyo. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your grace and mercies are new every morning. Thank you for your faithfulness is based on your great love for us and not on our faithfulness to you, for surely we will fail. That while we are not deserving of your grace, you gave it freely to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
May the word that you have spoken today speak life to us and remind us of your goodness every day. May we always find reasons to worship and praise you regardless of our situations and circumstances we are into. Grant us the desire to live and love like Jesus in all areas of our lives, that we, in everything we do, you, O oh God, will always be our priority. We leave all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.